Different ores in Minecraft have different uses. Iron is good for redstone and most other things. Gold is good for enchanting and bartering with piglins. Diamond is strong and tough, and netherite takes diamond up a notch. But where does copper fit into the picture? Let's find out in this episode of Dig Straight Down. What is going on, crafters? Welcome back to another episode of Dig Straight Down with me, your host, Rebel JC, recorded on Thursday, May 13th, 2021. Um, before we get into the episode, guys, if you hear background noises of children running back and forth and shouting and maybe a little TV show going on in the background, um, that's because my kids are back in the living room watching TV while I really quick record this episode. So if you hear any sounds of life, just remember, I'm a dad, and this is just the way we live. <laughs> um, let's start off this episode first by... Me saying that this episode is the second to last episode in this season of Dig Straight Down. Um, next episode will be the last episode of season three. And guys, it has been a blast. I've loved this season so I feel like the, the show has improved drastically in this season. And it definitely has grown in listenership and how many people are enjoying it and interacting with me on the Discord and in email and things like that. I've had so much fun in this season, and guys, I cannot wait for the next season. Season 4 is going to start in July of this year, and it's going to run till November because I take breaks in the months of June and December um, just to concentrate on other things, but also to get ready and improve the show for the coming season. Um, so there will be hopefully be some changes in season four that will make the show even better. I don't have anything set in stone quite yet. I'm still thinking through some ideas. Um, and I just want to invite you guys real quick, if you have any ideas for how the show might be improved, um, shoot me an email at digstraightdowncast at gmail.com or let me know on the Discord. Um, I can't obviously guarantee that your ideas will actually be a change in the upcoming season, but I do want to have that feedback and just see what you got, how you guys feel. Um, I have some ideas of how I personally want the show to continue. Um, number one, uh, and I'll just give you guys a heads up that the the Dragon's Egg Challenge is is going to stay. It's going to remain a feature of the show, but I I think it's going to be adjusted a little bit. Um, looking over my notes here in front of me, most of this episode. Um, in the notes is reading other people's ideas and I love doing that I really love doing that and I know you guys enjoy hearing your own ideas being read out in the program um, so I don't want to get rid of the dragon's egg challenge I think it's a fun thing I think it's one of the things that makes this show as good as it is um, but I'm going to adjust a little bit to diminish its role in every episode so I'm not spending so much time reading idea after idea from the community um, because some of your ideas great as they are are very complicated and hard to read um, and and I know that the point of this the point of this show is for me to share my ideas and to highlight other people's ideas. But I do want to give a little bit more attention to the discussion segment of this podcast. So what's going to happen eventually, what I think is going to happen, is that I'm going to, in season four, in the upcoming season, I'm going to give the Dragon's Egg Challenge, and I'm going to read the winning idea from the previous Dragon's Egg Challenge and list the winners and say who, you know, which team won. And then if you want to see the other ideas that were in the challenge for that episode, you can go to the website, which will be linked in every episode, and you can read every idea that was in the contest at that point. So that way I'm not spending so much time just reading idea after idea, and that just sort of dominates the episodes. I think that's just how it's going to turn out. I hope that nobody takes too much of an issue, but that's just the way I feel. That's that's the way I think that the show would be best um, 
as far as the Dragon's Egg Challenge is concerned. Um, so that being said, I want to begin this episode by reading a listener email, and I've been getting a lot of listener emails. I'm not going to read every single one I get in every episode. I have a, a note here on my laptop that just has every listener email that I get, so I'm going to go through them, maybe read one or two every episode. Um, so keep sending them. If you don't hear yours read out on the program right away, don't worry. It's probably in um, in a note, and I will read it in a future episode. Just uh, stay tuned for that. So let's start with this one from Fraser. And Fraser writes, Hi, Rebel. Just here to tell you a little idea I had. I thought maybe when you're climbing up a mountain, you could find a campground. It would be it would have custom tents made out of logs and wool and villagers that look like snow villagers. They would have barrels with loot and pet goats. Small idea, still working on it, but I'm a big fan of the podcast, and bye. And that was from Fraser. so thank you, Fraser, for sending me that email. I think the idea is really cool. I would I, Obviously, the mountains that we're going to get in 1.18 now are huge, and I think have plenty of room for even a whole village, honestly. But a campground like this, where you have basically, I'm imagining maybe these nomadic type villagers that sort of roam the mountainside. Maybe the lore is they're following the herds of goats, or maybe they're, they're goat herds, like shepherds of goats, and they, they, they farm the goats by allowing them to pasture and graze on every mountain slope, and they just sort of follow them around in tents. I think that that would be a really cool thing, and maybe you could find some some interesting um, loot in those barrels, like you said. Maybe another thing to flesh this idea out, to flesh this idea out is that these uh, goat herd of villagers basically use goat horns to um, send signals to the goats to alert them of danger, or maybe gather them into the fold at night. I think that that would be really cool um, and give a little bit of life to those huge mountains that we're going to get. So thank you for that email, Frazier. Again, guys, if you have an idea, send them to me at digstraightdowncast at gmail.com, and you might hear them on a future episode. So let's dig into the Dragon's Egg Challenge of this episode. So the Dragon's Egg Challenge is an event where three teams of listeners compete in creative challenges to win the Dragon's Egg Trophy. Now last episode... I gave the crazy challenge to imagine anything you want to see added in Minecraft. And we have several interesting ideas. Now let's start with Team Ironlock. Ironlock member Zacharia says, Hi Rebel JC, Zacharia here. I have an idea for the Dragon's Egg Challenge. Deep Slate Coal, Copper, Iron, Gold, Redstone, and Diamond have crafting recipes. But I think you should be able to craft Deep Slate versions of these items and with these items have special uses. For example, Deep Slate Redstone should be able to work underwater. And Deep Slate Diamond and Iron Armor could be slightly better than their normal counterparts. Bye and have a good week. Wow, I actually really like that idea. I think that idea is really, really cool because it makes sense because... Deep Slate ores are tougher to mine. They take a little while to mine. I think all of Deep Slate takes a little bit longer than stone to mine, and you can't insta-mine it. So the idea that it could be tougher, maybe because they these ores formed under more pressure because they're deeper in the world, they have a deep, different molecular structure. I don't know anything about geology, but that makes sense to me. I like that idea a lot, and uh, maybe it could even look a bit different too. Really cool idea. Uh, let's move on to the next one. This is from Jacob08, Spark, and The Gaming Gutter 2. And they, their idea is Jungle Tribes. And they write, You find Jungle Tribes in jungles. They're kind of like villages up in the trees in the jungle. There's four types of Jungle Tribe people. Spearmen, Dartmen, Master, and Master Assistants. There are only two assistants, but they will keep respawning if you don't kill the Master. Oh, okay, you're killing these people. <laughs> um, they will attack unless you have the Tribe Mask, which is crafted with two charcoal, one redstone, and one leather helmet, and five sticks. Uh, just like piglins, when you hit one of them, they will all chase you and try to kill you. 
when you kill the master, he drops the master's crown. With the crown, you can take up to four tribesmen with you for a whole Minecraft day. Just like pet tamed wolves, if you hit something, they will go after it. Master's assistants don't get fooled and they will still try to kill you even when you have the crown. In the village, you can find arrows, melons, cocoa beans, and tribe masks in chests. There is also goats that are stuck on altars with ancient runes on some pillars. I think there could be swinging vines like rope, but you can throw it to a hook block and then you can swing to a different platform. Okay, so we're like Spider-Man. Interesting idea there. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool. From Johnson of Donut, they write, Hey Rebel JC, I have an idea of a whole new biome, the Hickory Forest. The Hickory Forest is an overall biome that has orange grass and tree leaves. Water is light blue like warm oceans. In the hickory forest there are hickory trees. The hickory tree has a grayish brown bark and an inside that is a light lemony yellow. The trunk of the tree is laid out similar to an acacia tree but sticks out less. The leaves are orange and always with a slight change in the brightness depending on the biome. The tree has an increased chance of housing a beehive. On the ground, there is a new flower, the buttercup, originally from Minecraft Earth. The buttercup works the same as dandelions with a different texture. A small quirk to the biome is that all crops grow slower, with the exception of wheat and sugarcane, which grow considerably faster. That's a really interesting idea, and I think this biome, it sounds like it adds a lot more fallish, autumn-y um, uh, aesthetics to the game, and I'm Always a fan of that idea. The Hickory Forest sounds like a, a biome that I would like to live in. Uh, moving on to Spark. Spark writes, There could be eagle mounts that you could find in deserts. They have 30 health and 15 attack, and you tame them with rabbit. You can find eagle saddles in desert villages and temples. Okay, so we get to ride eagles like uh, in uh, Lord of the Rings. Awesome. For originality, I give these ideas a 3 out of 5. For attention to detail, I give them a 5 out of 5. And how well they fit into Minecraft, a 4 out of 5, which gives Ironlock an overall score of 12 points. So let's move on to Team Arcalor. Now from Arcalor members Quill Games with input from High Hopes. Their idea is, the linking book is an enchanting book that cannot be gotten from an enchanting table. It has a very low chance of spawning in a village, but is more common in other structures, such as the Pillager Tower. This would add lore to the Pillager Towers, showing that they tried to use the book at one point to capture villagers. Okay, let's see how that works. You could right-click a workstation slash bed, that the villager can pathfind to, but it has a slightly wider range with the book and it would become linked. Oh, okay, so if, and then they continue. If then you give the book to a villager by tossing it, they would walk to the bed or workstation. You cannot get the book back, but you can move the bed workstation, but not relink the villager for one Minecraft day. That's an interesting idea, and I think that would be a really good good addition to help us manage where villagers end up linking to because nothing is more annoying than having a base that you have nicely decorated you know with barrels and stuff because barrels look better than chests and then you're like hey i need to bring some villagers to live here and then you do and then they all become fishermen that's the no that is the most annoying thing because nobody likes that so um yeah why don't we have a way to manually link villagers to a workstation or a bed because also it's really annoying when a villager tries to take my bed. That's that's really annoying. It's like having a really annoying roommate. When you have your bedroom all made up, it's like, I'm the master of the house, this is where I sleep, and then the villager that you got to live in your house like a butler decides that he's going to, <laughs> he's going to move into the master bedroom. I don't think so. So I'll really like this idea. Uh, for originality, I give it a 4 out of 5. For attention to detail, a 4 out of 5. How well it fits into Minecraft, a 3 out of 5. I gave it a 3 out of 5 just because I don't think that this is this could ever really happen. I don't think the devs would go for this idea, but it would really make an amazing mod or a data pack. Uh, so uh, so Arcalor gets a score of 11. For Nightbane, uh, Nightbane member Blue Bolt 111 says, You are digging through the netherrack with your diamond pickaxe, hoping to find some nether debris to upgrade your kit. 
when suddenly you stumble across a small cave lit up by flowing lava and an emanating evil power. Then you see it. The monster spawner, the sounds of bones clanking and the lava hissing is enough to distract you from the dark, unobtainable sword that swing towards you, a black skull staring at you. If you haven't realized, I've invented a wither skeleton spawner. I like, I like that description. I think there should be a longer delay in the spawning of the skeletons as they are very dangerous and hard to fight. Also, I think that either the wither skeletons that spawn there shouldn't drop wither skulls or the chances of them dropping the skulls are even lower as I realize this would make wither skulls way too easy to farm. Also, I think that you should be able to find the wither sword in the chests that are found there. Amen to that, Blue Bolt. Absolutely. I, I need a wither sword. And people who say that the withers only have stone swords and that's why they drop stone swords, that's not true. <laughs> they have wither swords. Have you seen those swords? They're huge. They're huge. They're bigger than a stone sword. These are like broadswords. These are like claymores, and they get and they give a um and they give a withering effect. These these are weapons that I, that that we need in the game. This is the, the withering sword, <sighs> withering swords, chairs, and red dragons. Those are like the final update to Minecraft. We'll have those three things, and then the game is complete. <laughs> um, and they and they also say also a shout out to my cousin for helping me make the dungeon. Thank you, Blue Bolt 111 and Blue Bolt 111's cousin, for that idea. From Eli and Kelp, they write, We have an idea for a new biome called the Rooted Cavern. It is under a giant spruce tree that towers up to build limit. Wow. Under it is a giant cave. It has a new light, light source called the Root Beam. It only lights up in dark areas, and brightness depends on how much dirt is near. Next, there are special refugee villagers that escape the undead and a mob called the Rooted Dweller. It will attack you upon you either harming it, harming the villagers, or harming its hut, which is made of spruce and hay. It drops a rooted spear. The rooted spear works a bit like a trident, but also like a shear. It cannot be enchanted. There is also an iron golem frozen in ice. If you get him out, the villagers and dwellers give you great discounts, similar to the hero of the village effect. Very interesting idea there. Uh, the next one comes from Void, Coca Walnut, and Miss Bean, and their idea is new enchantments and a curse. The first new enchantment is backstabbing. It has three levels and gives 0.5 more damage per level when hit when you hit your target in the back interesting that would that would add a little bit more strategy to fighting uh wither it has a one point it has a one third chance at level one to give wither for, wither one for three seconds there's a lot of numbers in this one and at level two a one third chance for it to be wither two for three seconds it cannot be got from books <clears throat> there was a lot of numbers in that one uh there is another enchantment called leech Four, uh, Leech has four levels and gives 0.5 of a heart every two hits and goes up 0.5 of a heart every level. And not to be too OP, you can only get level four from a level 30 enchant table and it can't be got from books. All three of these enchantments can go on swords, but only backstabbing can be on an axe. Uh, and the curse that they have is dullness. This is a curse that is given to a sword or axe when they go below five points of durability. This will decrease damage and give mining fatigue to the axe. Hmm, interesting. So for originality, I give these ideas a 2 out of 5. For attention to detail, a 4 out of 5. And for how well they fit into Minecraft, also a 4 out of 5, giving Nightbane a score of 10. And that means the winner of this Dragon's Egg Challenge is Ironlock. Congratulations, Ironlock. Uh, and as the victorious music fades in, I will read the name of the victors. Jacob08, Omni, Bluefire, Catcraft507, Jackie Boy, Johnson of Donut, Henbonk, Lightning7210, Spark, SparkBandit04, The Gaming Gutter2, Thunder, Tucker, and Zacharia. For the next and final challenge of this season, this is the final challenge, guys. This is the last challenge of season three. There will be other challenges in season four, but this is the last challenge that you will have for a little while. So, I want you to imagine a whole new 
dimension. Don't worry. I'm going to stress this. Don't worry about giving lots of detail. Just describe what kind of world it is, what I might want to find there, and how I can enter it. Don't go into too much detail. Just give me the general overview of what this dimension is like. Ideas will be judged on originality, how well it is communicated, and how well it fits into the world of Minecraft. Notice that I didn't say attention to detail because I don't want this to be a super detailed idea. I want you to com focus on communicating it as clearly as possible. Each team can put forward more than one idea, so don't be shy to disagree with each other and come up with your own answers. However, I do want to see everybody working together on this. Whoever has the best idea, of course, will win the Dragon's Egg and will win a full team member shout out for the next episode. Again, if you want to take part in this challenge, you can either join a team on Discord or you can email me with your ideas. And in that email, please let me know what team you would like to be on. Deadline for these ideas is Wednesday, May 26th. Again, if you're emailing me your idea, please let me know in that email which idea, which team you want your idea to count for. Oh, with that being said, guys, let's dig into the main discussion of this episode. So before we get into the absolute main discussion of this episode, there are two snapshots that have happened over the course of the past two weeks, and I want to briefly touch on them. The first one is Minecraft Snapshot 21W18A, and of course these are Java snapshots. I don't really cover Bedrock as much, um, unless there's something really cool that stands out to me. So these are Java snapshots. Uh, changes in 21W18A are... Infested blocks are no longer instantly destroyed. Instead, they have half the destroy time of their non-infested counterpart. Um, which I've been seeing people who have been playing on the snapshot actually say that there may have been a, a, um, a mistake because it actually takes um, twice as long to mine infested blocks. And I'm sure that they'll go back and fix that. But they'll um, instead, they have half the destroy time. So... Instead of insta-mining insta an infested block and releasing the, the absolute hell that um, solarfish are, <laughs> um, you'll, you'll have enough warning to avoid them, which is a good thing, and I'm glad, because I hate silverfish, and I might do a whole episode one day on how to improve them. <laughs> uh, the second cha change in uh, 21W18A is screaming goats will use their ram, ram attack more often than other goats will. Cool change, I really like this. Um, so that means that for those people who want to use that ram attack feature for farms or just for fun or whatever, you're gonna be looking for screaming goats. And if you're playing on a on an SMP, any sort of shared multiplayer experience, um, you, here's a, here's a, um, a money-making opportunity for you. Find screaming goats, build a goat farm, and separate the screaming goats from the herd and sell screaming goats um, because those are going to be the goats that people are looking for. So there's there's a store opportunity for you if you're on a shared multiplayer world. Uh, for Minecraft Snapshot 21W19A, uh, there's four changes real quick. The maximum length of item names in the Anvil UI has been increased from 35 to 50, so now you can name things ridiculously long names. Uh, they've made geodes significantly rarer, which um, will connect to a point that I have in the main discussion. Um, uh, but uh, according to an Exumavoy video that I watched, it's not necessarily that much rarer so we'll see it says significantly rarer um from what i've been seeing is significantly actually means not at all also unfinished items uh such as the skulk skin <laughs> such as the skulk sensor bundles and candles have been removed from the creative inventory and recipes for unfinished items the bundles and candles have been removed um and this is because they've decided that those features which are the skulk sensor bundles and candles um, are going to be reserved for 1.18 instead of 1.17, um, which, I mean, I'm okay with that. Um, their reasoning was because they're not quite the way that they want them to be. They're going to continue to develop them and adjust them so that by 1.18, these features are perfect, um, 
Which, I mean, that's a little confusing to me because um, as far as candles, definitely. Candles, I'm... Um, I think that they were just fine that the the way that the snapshots were were showing us. Um, I didn't really see any reason why they need to be further improved or delayed. Um, but for bundles, I kind of understand. There's a lot of both haters and critics in the community of the bundles. Um, it's definitely been sort of the um, the outlier of this um, of this update. Um, but not by me personally. I'm a fan of the bundles. I will I will go to bat for the bundles um, all day long. But I understand why they might want to um, uh, take a step back and look at them and really really consider what the community is saying and maybe improve them to the point where everybody is generally happy with them. Uh, for the skulk sensor, that's okay. Number one, because I'm not a redstone technical guy, I don't want to play with the skulk sensor for any sort of farm or technical reasons. Um, but also because it's a fairly complex um, feature, and I understand why it probably bears a bit more development before they give it to us. Also, the deep dark where the skulk sensor is going to be found, or at least the places, the things that you need to craft it, the the, the, the deep dark is not going to be in 1.17, it's going to be in 1.18, so it makes sense that they would wait for the biome where this thing is actually from to be added um, before they add the thing itself, so... Um, I'm a little bit iffy about the candles. I think candles could probably be just fine being put into 1.17. But, I mean, what do I know? I'm not a developer. I, I have no authority to say what should and should not be done. And I have every bit of faith in the Minecraft developers to give us features in their own time in the way that they think it should be done. Because, I mean, raise your hand if you don't like Minecraft. And if you have your hand raised, why are you listening to this podcast? Um, but it also, if you have your hand raised, why are you playing Minecraft? If you're playing Minecraft and you're listening to a Minecraft podcast, chances are you think it's a pretty darn good game. And guess what? In the, in the version you're playing right now, probably doesn't have candles in it anyway. So I don't really understand. I'm going to go, go, go on a rant here. I don't understand the negativity and the the harshness with which some people in the community have been communicating their opinions about things like bundles or 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 I mean features that are, are are being added to the game, but also when these things are being delayed and I mean the whole the whole update split really brought these people out of the woodworks. And I'm not saying that I don't like the people. I would I respect their opinions. I don't agree with the way they're communicating. I think that a lot of the negativity is really undeserved. Um, number one, this is this is a game you paid one time for. These th th these updates are for free. They're allowing you to take a look at every step of the of the journey through these snapshots, and they're listening to you. They can't listen to everyone, and obviously everybody's opinion is not going to be the one that matters necessarily, but they're really, they do care about what we think, and they are listening. So when you communicate your opinions on whatever, understand that, first of all, if you're enjoying the game as is, then these updates are just icing on the cake, okay? Enjoy the cake that you have instead of complaining that it's not, you know, going to be the way that you would do it if you were in charge. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be, um, <laughs> that you have to lie about how you feel, and I'm also not saying that you have to be just overly positive about every little thing. I mean, if you don't like something, that's fine. You don't have to like everything. Um, I don't like everything um, that that's being added to the game or hasn't been added to the game or has happened during the development process. But I'm going to be, I want to be a supportive member of the community and I want to be a positive member of the community. And if I don't like something, you know what? It's okay. I don't have to play with it. If I don't like bundles, which I do, by the way, but if I didn't, I would just not play with them. I mean, just because some... There, there are a number of things that exist in Minecraft that I've never touched, but that doesn't ruin the game for me that they exist. So the attitude that's out there from a lot of the... From, from some, from some members in the community that because they're adding something to the game that you don't think, one, is the way it should be, or two, is even necessary, the attitude kind of comes across as if you 
as if they think that the game has been somehow ruined or tainted by its existence. Don't do that. That that does that's unreasonable. It doesn't make sense. Um, and if you see somebody doing that, just gently point out, hey, you know, how many times have you paid for this game? Is this a continual payment that you're putting out? I mean, how much is this update costing you? Oh, nothing? Oh, okay. Well, maybe you shouldn't be so harsh in your criticism. Criticize, sure. If you think that something deserves criticism, sure, you feel free to criticize. But do it in a supportive, positive way, and don't be, you know, a jerk about it. <laughs> um, because the developers are real people, and they're putting their heart and soul into the development of this game, and they're doing what they believe is right. And so we need to take that into consideration as we give our feedback and as we express our feelings and opinions about how this game is unfolding. Just remember those things. Um, and I'm proud of my community for being positive. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I want to get back into the main discussion. Sorry about the rant. Sorry about the soapbox. I hear I, I put the soapbox away. It's it's back in the it's back under the bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so let's move on to the main discussion uh, to kick it off. Here's a quote from Corey Shiviak, and I hope I'm saying that name correctly, from developer Corey Shiviak. And if I'm not saying that correctly, just, um, I guess, uh, send me an email let me know. <laughs> um, this is from the video Ask Mojang number 16, Tools in Gear, which will be linked in the show notes of this episode. And here's what Corey says. He said... We want to make sure that every tier of tool that we add to the game adds a value, and we want to make sure that every item and block that we add to the game has its own unique purpose. We don't want to add, just add a new ore, and then by default, that has to become a new armor or tool type. So in the case of copper, we didn't want it to just be another mid-level tool tier. That being said, there is a lot of potential for new types of tools and armors in the future. They just have to have unique purposes, end quote. Again, that video is in the description of this episode if you want to go check it out. Great video, um, answers a lot of questions. Now, while he wasn't specifically speaking about copper tools and armor, in fact, he kind of said that that probably isn't going to happen. It, I, I can't help but think about it. I can't help but think about what if we had copper tools and armor and what would that unique purpose be you guys know i'm all about that so i do have several ideas for how copper gear could work and how it could be unique copper already has a unique purpose among the various ores in the game iron is the jack of all trades or it's useful for mid-game gear and various redstone con components as well as some building blocks gold is not as useful for gear but seems to be the magic ore now I couldn't find an official source on this, but anecdotally, Golden Gear has better chance of getting the best enchantments. That's just what I've heard from multiple people who are not official sources. So you don't take that with a grain of salt, but that's what it seems to be. Gold armor is also a must-have when you're trying to barter peacefully with piglins, and you all know about that. Diamond is the strongest overworld ore, and netherite takes diamond to the next level by making it tougher, stronger, resistant to knockback, and lava and fireproof. So, what about copper? Copper seems to be leaning towards the scientific, technical sides of things. Now, we've seen from the snapshots, copper is used to craft things like lightning rods and spyglasses, both of these things kind of have a utilitarian function. They're kind of techy and, and sciency. So what other kinds of scientific tools could be made out of copper? Number one, we've already seen this, and it's not going to happen in 1.18, but we've already seen this tool, the brush. I think the brush could possibly be made out of copper and maybe some string. Um, we know that it's used in archaeology. It's used to brush away layers of dirt and sand and gravel to uncover relics. Um, obviously, hopefully one day, maybe 1.19, maybe 1.20, I don't know. One day we'll see the archaeology system and just how useful the brush will be. Um, but I've heard before, I think I've heard that the developers have said that they want more uses to be added to the brush. 
So maybe the brush could be used to change paintings? Um, I'm, I'm imagining you place a painting on the wall, you right click on, on it with the brush, and the painting changes to another painting. So you're not constantly taking it down, putting it back up, taking it down, putting it back up. You are just putting it up one time and then right clicking it and toggling through every painting until you get the one that you want. So many headaches removed <laughs> instantly <laughs> when it comes to paintings if that was implemented. I think that that would be really cool. Um, so for some of these ideas, I was thinking um, some th things that would be useful for both versions, Java and Bedrock, both. And one of the key differences between Java and Bedrock is that Bedrock doesn't have a debug screen. Now, I'm resisting to pull out my ISO box again because I it's a pet peeve of mine when I have to use the debug screen for survival gameplay and when I and when I see other people using it um, to to figure out their coordinates to figure out you know what level they're on you know to figure out what biome they're in or what the light level of a certain block is so what I see here is an opportunity to add tools that replace debug screen features so let's start with the coordinates obviously if you're playing java you hit f3 or whatever button you you usually hit and uh the, the you can see your coordinates in the in the debug screen what if we added a sextant now if you don't know what a sextant is look it up it's uh s-e-x-t-a-n-t -E um, it's a really cool tool that was used, I think it might still be used, but it definitely was used back in the day um, when sailors were just trying to figure out where they were in the world, um, what their latitude, longitude, that kind of thing. And it's a tool that you basically use to you know, figure out at what angle the sun is to the horizon and then doing math mathematics and magic stuff that's way over my head. <laughs> um, you're able to figure out where you are on a map, basically. So you, it's a, it's a coordinates finder in real life. What if we added that to Minecraft? You make a sextant out of copper, and you're able to use it to find your coordinates. Um, this would be just so useful, and, it, it, and especially for Bedrock players. I don't think Bedrock players have a way to find what coordinates they're at. Give them a sextant. Uh, use copper to make it. It's a very sciencey exploration, navigation, technical tool that has a use that is way useful for Bedrock players and for Java players who do not want the immersion breaking experience of using the debug screen. Add the sextant so we can find our coordinates. Uh, the next one would be a magnifying glass. Now, what do you what, what does that mean? Am I trying to look for you know tiny little things in the world of Minecraft? No. This is just the only thing that I can think of that would help us discover what light level certain blocks are, um, because obviously magnifying glasses interact with light. I'm, I, I thought maybe using a prism or something like that. I couldn't find any real tools that in the real life you use to find light levels that match the Minecrafty aesthetic, except for my magnifying glass. So I'm imagining you use copper and glass, maybe a glass pane to create a magnifying glass. And you're able to use a magnifying glass, um, right click on a block, and you're able to see what uh, light level it is. Um, again, for better art players and for Java players who don't want to use the debug screen. <clears throat> now going back to the the, the note about one of, one of the snapshots said that um, Amethyst uh, geodes are going to be rarer now, apparently, which I don't think is necessarily the case, but apparently they're going to be significantly more rare. Um, I was thinking, okay, well, here's an opportunity. How can we create something that we could possibly use to find these things? But also, there's other things in the world that I would like to be able to find without having just to stumble upon them by chance. So things like uh, monster spawn in dungeons, uh, things like fossils, um, how about slime chunks for those people who want to make um, slime farms without having to use third-party applications to you know scan your world to find the spawn chunks because I mean I mean I'm sorry the slime chunks because um, I mean that's immersion breaking that you're going outside of the game to play the game and it doesn't really make sense to me so how can what what can we add to the game made out of copper 
that would be able to locate these things. Um, and then it just sort of struck me. A dowsing rod. A dowsing rod is something that people have used throughout history. Um, even now, some people use it. And it's a pseudoscience-y kind of thing. It's not proven that there's any reason why it works, but people will swear by it. Um, a dowsing rod is used to find underwater um, uh, mineral deposits. Um, I'm sorry, underground mineral deposits, underground water, underground oil, um, things like that. Um, so people have used it to locate various various things throughout history. So what I'm imagining is a dowsing rod that is crafted out of uh, copper. It will vibrate and hum if you're holding it and you are directly above a feature like a geode or a dungeon or a fossil, or if you're within the borders of a sl of slime chunks. Um, and th obviously, this is, I don't feel like this is too overpowered because you still have to you have to craft it, you have to travel around with it, and when it when it starts detecting something, you don't know what it's detecting. You don't know if it's a fossil. You don't know if you're in a slime chunk. You don't know if it's a geode. You don't know. You just know that it's one of those things, and it's up to you to, to kind of decipher what it is. But what it does is it takes the element of just pure chance out of it, and it makes it a little bit more, makes your exploration, I think, a little bit more intentional without holding your hand and just leading you the entire way to a very specific thing. So, dowsing rod, add that, made out of copper. Another thing, and this is, uh, anybody who has seen any modded gameplay has seen this, the wrench. Um, and I think this should be added. I think the wrench made out of copper would be used to change states of certain blocks. And I mean, we all, we, those of us who are familiar with certain kinds of gameplay, certain kinds of mods are familiar with this feature. You would be able just to right click a wall or a stair, maybe a glazed terracotta block, logs or workstation blocks, to change the way that they're placed. Um, this would just be really for uh, either technical players or for builders, I think would be, it would be very useful for, uh, very useful for those kind of gameplay. Um, the next tool is a crowbar, a crowbar made out of copper. The crowbar would be able to break down certain blocks into their base components. Like it would, for instance, it would break down wooden stairs into their equivalent planks. It would also serve as the weapon of the copper set. And for any um, Half-Life fans out there, this is obviously Gordon Freeman. <laughs> um, you, you going around smashing aliens with a <laughs> copper uh, crowbar. It would deal as much damage as an iron axe, and it could be enchanted with knockback to make it more useful as a weapon. And perhaps it would have a small chance of removing the armor from your target when you attack it. Because it's a crowbar. You're basically prying the armor off of your enemy. Cool idea, in my own opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Um, the next and last tool made out of copper would be copper pipes. And I know people have said this before, and I'm 100% agree. Copper pipes would be really, really cool for sci-fi sci and like steampunk type builds. These would be mostly decorative, but if you connect them to a lava or a water source, the other open end of the pipe would drip that liquid, so you could use it for cauldron farms. Um, this would also carry an electric charge like wire when it is struck by lightning, so combining it with a lightning rod would allow you to utilize lightning for various effects. Um, so that's all the tools that I have um, my ideas for, you know, what to use copper or for. Let's get into copper armor. Now, when thinking about copper armor, obviously, the, the basic idea of armor, you know, it, it, I, don't, I didn't want it to be just like, you know, any other kind of armor just made out of copper and therefore weaker. Um, so to make it more unique and more techy than the other suits of armor, my idea is copper armor would be more like a mechanical suit. Um, it would be crafted with copper ingots and some redstone dust. When charged, because the, it would be able to be charged with, 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 with redstone power. When charged, each piece of copper armor would give the wearer a buff for a limited time, similar to the uh, turtle shell helmet. 
it would also turn a brighter color and produce redstone particles to show that it is charged. And that will be helpful for PvP so that you're not walking around in super powerful charged copper armor and nobody knows, but that people can instead see if your armor is charged. Um, the charged copper helmet would give you resistance. The helmet would kind of look mechanical and sci-fi. It would have two small antennas on the sides and a pair of goggles attached. So it's less like a medieval armor and more like a more steampunk looking armor. The charged copper chest plate would give strength. The chest plate would cover the shoulders and the arms of your player leaving the actual abdomen of your player exposed, kind of signifying that's a little bit weaker than most other armors. Uh, there would be gears at the shoulder joints, kind of giving you the idea that it's actually mechanical, and when it's charged, you know, it's kind of augmenting your strength and your, your motion. Uh, the charged copper leggings would give jump boost, um, and, the, and there would be gears at the hips of the, uh, the leggings as well, just to signify, hey, it kind of it ha gives you a bit more mechanical boost when it's charged. And then finally, charged copper boots would give swiftness to your player. Copper armor would only be able to be enchanted with mending or unbreaking because it kind of already has a, a, um, a buff built into it. Um, I didn't want to make it super OP, so you could only put mending or unbreaking on it. You can only charge copper armor while you're either wearing it or while it's on an armor stand so that you could kind of Iron Man style have like a closet full of supercharged, you know, copper armor. <laughs> it, would it, it would retain its charge in item form so you could put charged copper armor in a chest to store it, um, but it would also begin to wear out when it's worn so the charge would go down uh, the moment you're wearing it. And the way you charge copper armor, there's three ways you charge copper armor. To get a two minute long charge, you stand on a redstone block and that immediately charges all of your armor for two minutes. Um, standing on an activated beacon charges your armor for four minutes and being struck by lightning charges your armor for eight minutes. So this gives you a little bit more strategy when you're when you're wearing your armor so if you're going into battle and you're wearing copper armor you'll want to take a redstone block with you to plop down stand on it real quick and mount it up and go on with your fight because that charge is only going to last two minutes um, and if there's beacons around you jump on the beacon you get a four minute charge and if you are happen to be struck by lightning randomly um, you get an eight minute charge um, I thought that this would be a way to give copper sort of a its own unique niche within the family of ores that we have. Um, Sciencey, techy stuff is is missing in Minecraft, and I know a lot of people say, "Well, that's because Minecraft is a fantasy game. You can't have sciencey stuff." Well, it's redstone. <laughs> um, redstone is sciencey, and I know that a lot of people think it's like a magical thing, but redstone is very scientific, and Minecraft is actually a very technical game. So while there are a lot of medieval fantasy esque elements in Minecraft, there definitely is a side of Minecraft that is very science fiction. Um, so I think if you if you keep it more down to earth and more kind of steampunky rather than, you know, cyberpunk or or something like that, something that's like super clean and um, and modern and electric, if you give it more of a rough and ready sort of rusty lived in um, feel, I think it remains Minecrafty while taking Minecraft into a technical scientific side. So uh, copper armor that you can charge and basically you're walking around like Iron Man, I guess in this case Copper Man, <laughs> um, and then tools that are more scientific in their use, especially the dowsing rod. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, I think that, that would that's sort of an answer for what carp, copper armor and copper gear could be look like in Minecraft. Um, let me know what you guys think because that brings us to the end of this episode. As always, feel free to email me with questions or comments at digstraightdowncast at gmail.com. You can also join the Discord. The link is in the show notes if you're over 13. And you can connect with me on Twitter at rebeljc underscore 92. If you're feeling particularly generous today, please drop by Apple Podcast and leave 
a very nice and positive review. I'd love to see that. And guys, until the next and final episode of Season 3, continue to dig straight down, and I'll see you at Bedrock. Bedrock.